Dredgers are starting to be built en masse in Russia. Agree, the very word dredger seems to refer us to the field of armaments. An earthen shell? How is that even possible? And does the mass production of such projectiles mean preparation for a future war? Knowledgeable people are probably smiling now. That's what the author is scratching. What kind of weapon? What kind of war? Well, I'm sorry, you need to create an intrigue for order. In fact, a dredger is an abbreviation for a dredger or dredger. At the same time, the word projectile is used not in the sense of ammunition, but in the sense of an instrument of adaptation, such as, for example, a sports projectile. This instrument has a very decent size, a whole ship, like this, for example. The purpose of such vessels, as the name implies, is to draw soil from the bottom of a river, lake, or sea. They have special devices for this. With this device, the dredger lifts the soil from the bottom and loads it on a barge or on itself. What is it for? There are two main purposes. Deepening the bottom of the reservoir and extraction of building materials such as sand and crushed stone. Both of these areas are in great demand now and will be even more in demand in the near future. Everything is clear with building materials. The scale of construction in Russia of the same roads is impressive, so the need for a huge amount of bulk building materials is obvious. And why deepen the bottom? Of course, for shipping. If you disassemble the device of the Crimean Bridge, built in a very shallow place, there is a depth of up to 3 meters in total. In order for ships to be able to pass under the bridge, it is necessary to deepen the bottom, and since it is constantly silted up, such a thing as a dredger is very necessary. Or, for example, a large-scale reconstruction of waterways on the Volga is currently underway. Russia spends billions on this. That's because the Volga is the artery of Eurasia. The north-south route to Iran passes through it, allowing you to bypass the Suez Canal. So far, the Volga is not very ready for this including because it is shallow in places, there are not enough deep ports everywhere, and so on. Deepening the Volga is a serious and strong task, and their dredgers are needed in huge quantities. The same applies to other navigable rivers in Russia. It's no secret that river navigation was practically lost in our country during the 90s. The rivers were silted up, many ports were devastated, and the fleet was almost completely destroyed in the 90s. Although the potential is huge, transportation of goods within Russia, international transit, river tourism, river passenger service. For example, grain and fertilizers will no longer need to be transported by trucks to Novorossiysk, which cannot cope with such a flow in any way. It is enough to take the cargo to the Volga, and from there it can go out into the world ocean. River navigation needs to be revived, and this process, by the way, is already underway. So dredgers in this case are like a bulldozer or a skating rink in the construction of a highway. The most important thing. In this regard, we are pleased with such news, which has begun to appear more and more often now. I'll quote it. Construction of the first batch of six dredgers has begun at the Astrakhan shipyard. These are vessels of the 93.159A project. The project is domestic. It uses domestic marine equipment. That's about the appearance. Of course, you will say that six pieces is not enough, but they are being built not only at this plant, but also in other places. In the future, similar vessels will be built in even larger quantities, including, possibly, for sale to other countries. Once again, Russia is a country of rivers, and the fact that we have few such vessels so far is a huge omission. Well, let's give more examples of how the shipbuilding industry is developing in our country. Let's list the events for only one month of 2023 for April. And then in this review, we could not list all the events, so there will be only the most significant ones. So, the state transport company has accepted two more river passenger electric vessels of the EcoBase project, built at the Imperium shipyard in the Leningrad region. The electric vessels of the EcoBase project are designed for passenger transportation along the Moscow River. The flag of the Russian Federation and the pennant Rosrobolovstvo were raised on the new Krabalum Captain Kazan, built at the Nakotka shipyard in Primorsky Krai. The vessel is designed for the extraction and transportation of live craft. The series is distinguished by the IC, two ice class, improved seaworthiness, higher productivity compared to the current fleet, a new level of safety and comfort for the crew, and higher environmental performance. The crabbers are equipped with automation systems and digital control of technological processes. Construction of a series of eight crab vessels is underway at the Nakaka SRZ as part of the implementation of the Crab Quota Investment Program. A solemn ceremony of launching the first marine special vessel of the Nikolai Kamov Project 144.0, which is being built in the interest of the Russian Navy, was held at the shipyard of the Ship Repair and Shipbuilding Corporation in the Nizhny Novgorod region. After completion of the construction and testing complex, the vessel will be transferred to the center for training and retraining of naval aviation personnel in the city of Yes. Nikolai Kamov is planned to be used for practical training of shipboard helicopter crews. With the help of special devices, 
various conditions can be simulated on it for training helicopter pilots to land on deck. Ivan Miliutin, a pusher tug of the TSG-395 project, was launched at the Chiripaviets shipyard in the Vologda region. By the end of 2024, the shipbuilders will launch another similar tugboat. The launch of a Skeg-type hovercraft with flexible Skegs of Project 03660 Haska 10 took place at the Ribinsk shipyards in the Yaroslavl region by independently descending from the test site onto the ice surface of the Ribinsk reservoir. The Haska 10 is the largest civilian hovercraft with flexible Skegs. Their use will increase the efficiency and controllability of the vessel while maintaining sufficiently high amphibious seaworthiness and seaworthiness characteristics. The Northern Shipyard of the United Shipbuilding Corporation and the fishing company Verma signed an act of acceptance of the transfer of the Ganvik, one head longline processor. Ganvik, one is the lead longline fishing vessel, according to which the Northern Shipyard is building two more orders for the Northern Fisheries Basin as part of the first stage of the state program quotas for keel. Metal cutting has begun at the Admiralty Shipyards for the eighth large freezer fishing trawler of the ST. 192 project, which is being built for a Russian fishing company. In total, Admiralty shipyards are building 10 super trawlers for the RRPC as part of the implementation of the investment quota program. At the Oxkaya shipyard in Navashino, Nizhny Novgorod region, the crab ship Captain Skov Pin was launched. Before the direct launching of the Krabalov, Captain Skov Pin, Another important event took place as part of the ceremony. Russian Crab Group and the Oka Shipyard have signed a contract for the construction of a new series of six crab vessels of the 5712 LS project. The crab processor of this project is designed for the extraction of crab and its processing into finished products at the ship's factory. The vessels of this project are designed to operate in difficult hydrometeorological conditions of the Bering Sea of Okhotsk and the Sea of Japan. Modern crabbers are distinguished by improved seaworthiness, doubled capacities for extraction and processing of catch, automation and digital control of technological processes, a new level of safety and comfort for the crew, higher environmental performance. A solemn ceremony of launching the third high-speed passenger catamaran Fort Alexander I of Project 04580 Kotlin was held at the Srednevsky shipyard in St. Petersburg. The design takes into account the experience of the shipping company and the specifics of operation in the waters of St. Petersburg and access to the Gulf of Finland. Catamarans built at the SNSC will be able to pass under the summaries of the St. Petersburg bridges, have high speed and seaworthiness qualities. Passengers of up to 197 people, including persons with disabilities, are accommodated in comfortable conditions in the cabin and on the open part of the upper deck.